I'd like to introduce our first speaker, who is Dr. Fred Travis from the United States. Dr. Travis is a leading figure in research into the field of consciousness and the development of consciousness through the Vedic technologies of consciousness, including Transcendental Meditation and the Transcendental Meditation City program. He has published over 70 scientific papers in top peer-reviewed scientific journals around the world and has given presentations at major international conferences for many years. Dr. Travis received his master's and PhD in psychology from Maharishi University of Management in the US and has a BS in design and environmental analysis from Cornell University. He is currently the director of the Center for Brain, Consciousness and Cognition at Maharishi University of Management USA. And he'll be showing us today how the practice of transcendental meditation impacts the brain. We'll also all be able to watch this. Dr. Travis, thank you. Thank you very much. Shankacharya, Maharaja, Swamis, fellow lovers of the Ved. I'll be looking at yoga, samadhi, Vedic recitation, and total brain function. Let's begin with the definition of yoga. This is from Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. It's verse two, chapter one. Yoga chitta vritti narodaha. And this can be translated as yoga is a complete settling of the activity of the mind. It's a state of yoga, there's no mental activity, there's no thought, there's no perception, there's just a unity of self-awareness. What is the brain model of this state? Here is a brain, it's looking to there. In the center, there's a red area. This is called the thalamus. The thalamus has two types of cells. One type of cells receives information from the outside that's seeing, hearing, touching, tasting. It creates these loops with the brain as a whole, and that's how we see, that's how you're seeing me. But there's other cells that are very important, and these receive information up through the brain stem these also create loops with the surface of the brain and that's what creates wakefulness. These two things are going on simultaneously. So in terms of this model, yoga is a complete settling of the activity of the mind. Through eliminating sensory experience, transcending thought, maintaining wakefulness, we come to a state of pure wakefulness. This is samadhi. It's a self-referral experience that's full and free but independent from content. This brain model lets us understand what the brain waves may look like during the state of yoga. Because these loops take about 100 milliseconds, so every second they go up and down 10 times. And that's what this looks like in the brain. Time is going this way, each column is a second, each line is a different point on the brain, and notice these, um, the movement of these lines here. You notice they're going up and down. If we count them, we'll find they're going up and down 10 times per second. This is the brain signature of yoga. It's the brain signature of the state of least excitation of the mind. Also notice that the waves are going up and down together. And this is very important because it means those parts of the brain are working together. It's like a whole group where everyone has a common thought. Coherence lets the brain be more powerful and we see that this signature is over the whole brain and this is called coherence. So another way to look at the brain waves during yoga is this. This is pre presenting coherence. This is presenting the top of the brain, the front of the brain. Each dot is where brain waves are being recorded there's a line between dots if the coherence between those parts of the brain are 80% or more. And we see in the red line, this is a specific frequency, this is the alpha frequency, very high coherence in the front of the brain, that's the boss of the brain, that's where the Shankasharya would be in your brain. It controls and, and has uh, connections with all other parts of the brain. And we see it's in the front but also throughout the brain. This side presents blood flow during the state of yoga. 
If it's red, it's increased blood flow. If it's blue, it's decreased blood flow. What we're seeing is increased blood flow, again, in the front of the brain. This underlies the experience of alertness, full wakefulness in the state of yoga. The blue is in the, the brain stem, and this is underlying the experience of restfulness, of quiet, of silence. And the experience of yoga has very practical applications, and that is the brain is, is a self-organizing structure. It's always changing itself to every experience. It's similar to the analogy of dyeing a cloth, where you take a cloth, you put it into dye, it comes out saturated with color, you hang it in the sun, most of it goes away, but a little bit becomes fast. And then you put it back into the um, dye again, it comes out completely yellow. This is an analogy for what's happening. We transcend to the state of yoga, to the state of deep rest, heightened alertness, we come back into activity. We begin to bring yoga into activity, to bring the silence and stability of yoga into the dynamics of living. We see this progression of the integration of brain changes here. This, the purple dot is what's happening here at eyes closed. This is during a challenging task. Then people started the TM practice, which leads very quickly to the state of yoga. And this is what we find is during TM, the brain waves are quite more coherent, more orderly than during eyes closed. But look at here during the task. The task is beginning to change as well. At six months, we find that the coherence during TM remains at its high level. This is very critical because with TM, we transcend using the natural tendency of the mind. And being natural, you can quickly master it and begin to bring those benefits into daily life. As we see here, notice this brain signature is still growing during the task. 12 months, we have the same picture. TM, transcendental meditation, transcending, is leading to restful alertness, the state of yoga and that state is beginning to grow more and more in activity. What we see here is the brain's signature of Krishna's command to Arjun, Yogastha Kuru Kamani. Transform your inner nature first and then act. This is a point that Dr. Morris brought out in great detail on day one. This is what Lord Krishna told to Arjun is give the knowledge of yoga to the rulers of the world, to Viviswa, to Manu. It's the foundation of successful rulership. It also helps um, in terms of people who are in need. These are individuals with attention deficit hyperactive disorder. And this is looking at a brain measure, and if it's high, it means severe symptoms here at the beginning. The blue bar are people who learned the transcendental meditation, meditated for three months, we see the severity of attention deficit hyperactive disorder is decreasing. At three months, the control group also started. So here both groups are transcending and we see both are decreasing on this severity of measure of attention deficit hyperactive disorder. TM transcendental meditation also helps college students who are under a great deal of stress, time pressure, um, they often deprive themselves of sleep, which also makes it harder for the brain to work. Here we find a pretest. There's similar levels of brain integration. It's a measure of, that includes brain coherence. The post-test is three months later. That three months is during finals week. Finals week, a time of high pressure uh, for the students. And we find those individuals who have been transcending, contacting the state of yoga, actually have higher levels of brain integration. What they've done is they've transformed their inner nature, so now they perceive the stress of college as a challenge rather than as a stress. These students trained in transcendental meditation had greater decreases in negative personality traits such as mood disturbance, anxiety, depression, greater increases in positive personality traits such as global constructive thinking, emotional and behavioral coping. Because Transcendental Meditation helps students to handle stress and learn more effectively, it's been incorporated in schools in over 50 countries. Each yellow dot you see here is a school that's incorporated Transcendental Meditation into their learning curriculum. There's a very big dot in India because there's over 100 schools that's adopted this practice. Transcendental Meditation leads to the state of yoga, but also other Vedic technologies such as listening to Vedic recitation. 
I spent the last month at the Pramastan of India and recorded brain waves in 27 individuals listening to the Vedic recitation. With me today is Philippe, who was in the Brahmastan just a few days ago. And what we'll be doing is looking at Philippe's brain waves when he opens his eyes, when he closes his eyes. Uh, he can't stand up. When he closes his eyes, practices transcendental meditation, and we'll look at his brain waves. And then the Vedic pundits are here, and they'll be chanting um, for two or three minutes, and we'll look at um, Philippe's brain waves. So what we see here are brain waves in these first two columns. We see two of them. One is the brain wave on the right, the one is coming on the left. The reason I'm showing you the brain waves from the front of the brain, because again, that's the part of the brain that changes most dra dramatically during TM practice. Now each, dot, each line you see here is one second, so this is what's happening in real time. This third row here is looking at the coherence between these two brain waves. It's looking at the coherence between the left and the right side of the brain. And now, as you notice, the, brain, the coherence is changing quite dramatically during eyes open. Now, this is a healthy brain. It's okay. <laughs> and in fact, what the brain is doing is it becomes coherent for a moment, so you can see a person, and then it breaks apart. And then becomes coherent, different parts of the brain to uh, understand who they are, and then it breaks apart. So when your eyes are open, your coherence is going up and down. When it's low, it means coherence is low. Two sides of the brain are doing different things. When coherence is high, it means the brain is functioning as one. So, um, Philippe, you can close your eyes and start your transcendental meditation practice. Very good, so sit easily. Open your eyes when you're comfortable. I'm going to play that back and comment on it. It was very good. First, here's eyes open. We notice first the brain waves are very fast and here's a coherence. You see it changing. Notice at this point he starts his transcendental meditation practice. The coherence goes up. It goes down for a moment because of the sounds that are in the room. And then again, after about 20 seconds, half a minute, it goes up to a very high level there. TM is a very dynamic process. Transcending is a very dynamic process of turning the attention within, going out, attending to outside activity, turn the attention within again. So this is the alpha activity that we've been speaking about. You notice it's in both the left and the right side of the brain. And we see during the process of transcending, the coherence remains consistently high. It varies again, but it's a much higher level. This is the mind being in a more settled state. Now I'd like to ask the pundits to chant, but I ask um, a favor if you could chant very softly, um, very, very quietly. Um, I asked Ruda um, Sutram, but the Vaidaji I've spoken with, he knows yes. So, because of time. Okay. Think for your eyes, it easily.
Wonderful, Jagger Dev. Thank you very much. I hope you noticed something as you were watching the coherence. So again, here we have our eyes open coherence. And that is, as the chanting went on longer and longer, the coherence started to be more and more at the top. And also, something that we've just noticed this year is that the coherence grows as the verse unfolds and it's in the gap, it's in the silence that the coherence is high. It's where you see times like this, where we see alpha coherence in the front, coherence is very high. You see the whole picture of the Vedic recitation stitching the state of yoga. This, the state of yoga seems to dawn in the gaps between the verses. Thank you very much, Vedic pundits. My summary slide, Vedic technologies lead to the state of yoga that can be scientifically verified and practically realized by, in life of everyone on earth. The experience of yoga is essential for the modern scientific world to be happy and successful. Thank you very much. Take your day.